What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. For those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Jody McGinley. I'm a professional doubles player on the tour. I'm currently ranked around 375 in the world. And last week I played an ATP Challenger in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. My partner for the week was Lucas Hovey, played for the University of Illinois. He's around 430 in the world. And our opponents were Hans Hack and Simon Walker. These guys are ranked around 150 in the world. They were as high as top 100, so tough opponents, obviously. And today we're going to react to that video, just rewatch the highlights. I say highlights, but it's every single point. Um, I'm just going to take some notes. I'll tell you what I observed. So leave a comment down below what you think I did well, what you think I didn't do as well, and what I need to improve on going forward. So let's get into the video. I don't know why before this match I wasn't that nervous. I thought I would be a little bit more nervous because it's a challenger and I haven't played that many challenges. Normally at 375 in the world. You won't be able to get into that many challenges, but, um, but yeah, I think we started pretty well. Um, Hovi and I have never played together. We just spent three or four days practicing before the tournament, playing a bunch of practice sets. So considering that, you know, it was our first time playing together, we took a few days just to try and figure out what, we're, what we could do as a team. And yeah, I thought that we started making them play a lot of balls in the first game. I'm going to try not to pause the video too much because I actually recorded this video last night and it was a 36 minute video when I paused it to try and explain some stuff. So I'm going to try and let this video just play through. Um, in the warm up before the match, maybe like an hour before the match, for those of you who play competitive tennis or play matches in general, I don't know if you can relate, but I've come to the realization that how you warm up isn't necessarily how you're going to play. I've had really good warm ups and played really bad and I've had bad warm ups and played good. But before this match, I was um, hitting the ball really clean. And I remember just going through my mind, like, bro, please, I hope I play the match how I'm warming up right now. Because I was hitting the ball really clean. I was balling well. I was serving well. Everything was easy. So that was one of, that's one of the things that crossed my mind. But on a day like today, where a result like this really matters for a team like me and, me and Harvey, the biggest thing was like staying in the moment. Like I knew I was playing well, so I was just trying my best to just stay in the moment and not let, you know, the highs and lows be too high and too low. What an athlete I am. Caught that one a little bit late, but we take it. One of the notes for hands, the lefty in the deuce court. His forehand's really good. Um, so when going to his forehand, we had to be smart about it, serving to his forehand. Try to target the backhand as much as we could. Simon Walker, we didn't really know that much about him, to be honest. We just kind of figuring it out. I believe that was a football. In this match, we had a, like three or four footballs and weird calls. Um, as you'll see as the match goes on, you'll see some. In this moment, Hov is actually telling me I'm in eye formation. He's telling me to get lower. <laughs> he's not the tallest person, so he's telling me to get lower because he's afraid of hitting me in the back of the head. Also, that hole was huge for us. Not only because it backs up the break, but also in practice, bro, we were getting killed on his serve. The first time we held serve, or even won a set, I would say, was the very last set we played the day, like the night before this match. Um, and I guess that gave us some confidence and we kind of just reset. And one of the things I told him was he was trying so hard. We we're trying so many different things, different formations. Like he was trying to bomb a few serves, slice a few serves, kick a few serves. Just trying to figure out how to get his percentage higher so he doesn't have to hit that many second serves. Um, and... I was lucky, yeah. And he, um, the, right before, like the day before, he just said, I'm just going to go back to basics and start from the beginning. And I said, bro, honestly, just tank. Like, when you have a, a server who, or a, a player who works really hard and tries really hard, and I tell him to tank, he's not going to go from trying 10 out of 10 to trying 1 out of 10. He's not going to tank. He's, he's probably going to take it down a notch to, like, 
six out of ten, you know, which relaxes him and, and makes him make a high percentage of first serves, which is what it did. And then us just getting a hold to start on his serve to start the set, like to start the to, to consolidate the break, I mean, gave us a lot of confidence going forward. I think this game was a little bit emotional for me to double fall two points ago and then missing a the first serve there. At 4-1 double break, I really shouldn't be, um, I guess, as tense as I was in this game. And those kind of points, like at, the, at this higher level, the ball passes so fast to, to react. That's why these guys are so good. Their reaction is so... The muscle memory to react so quick is there, and I would say that that's one of the things that I would I would work on moving forward. And I've already started doing that this week already. Just doing a little bit more of the neutral volley games. Because I don't know if you guys can tell so far, but my first volleys in this match is pretty good, and my volleys when I'm already at the net is pretty good. But the ones from neutral where we're going to go volley volley, or if, if I have to, hit, have to hit two or three volleys in a game, those are the ones that I think, not that I'm bad at it necessarily, but I can get exposed at this level because these guys just, they can play like ping pong at the net. That was the net. Before you guys call me out, the ball hit the net. This team does a very good job of closing the middle of the court. Like, they will just camp right in the middle of the court and force you to try to go either above or around them, which is one of the things we knew as well. Like, look at where he was. He just completely in the middle of the court, taking it over. And you'll see more instances later in the match of the same thing. One of the things I like about playing with Hovi is that he's going to swing at every single return. Like in a moment of tension, you have a partner who's like literally swing at every single return. It helps. I would say it eases the pressure a little bit. For me, it makes me feel less nervous knowing that they're just going to go for it. This moment of the match, serving for the first set, I was really proud of, of how I handled it. I made a lot of first serves. I started to mix like the slice out wides here and do yeah. Um, yeah, I was proud of how I closed out the first set with a lot of confidence. I caught that one a little bit late, so it's, it's spun sideways away from the court instead of forward into the court. In this moment, I just thought be aggressive, <laughs> hit, hit the phone as hard as you can. I was in pretty good rhythm on my serve, so I was feeling confident that we can get the job done on my serve here. Not the best pickup on that one. I was lucky. Good move. It's actually crazy how for a short person, Harvey actually gets up for so many overheads. Like, I don't know if you guys remember the first point of the match where he hit five overheads. He does a really good job. This was the first instance in the match where I felt like this guy's serve was starting to break down a little bit. Like he was starting to give a few, a few doubles and a few first serve mistakes and stuff. Like that, that serve was really slow. And he started spraying like this one really far out. Double. I thought it was in, but I wasn't going to give them the call because it could get messy. If I give them a call and they don't give us a call, like. Hans asked me in this moment, he was asking me if it was in. I said, yeah, it was in, but I'm not just going to give up a call because you can't expect them to give a call either. 
So I will pause it here because I'll say that I remember us losing this game, and this is how you can tell, like that you know, I get emotional, and and well, not me in particular, but any player will get emotional because I remember what happens at the end of the game, but I didn't remember what happened at the beginning. So we go love love fifteen because Hovi doubles because of a foot fault call, which is extremely unlucky, obviously. So that's the first note that we'll take. Love dirty off of a net cord. Good job, good good backhand defensive shot down the line. Dirty all. So I'll pause again here and say, Hans hasn't gone down the line once on a return. I'm split stepping, covering the line. Like this ball, like, I'm, I kind of feel like I didn't need to cover the line as hard because he has not gone line once. Like, not once. So, for him to pass me at 30 all down the line, down a break, would be... I mean, those are the ones you say too good. You know, try and force him to try and do that. Like, make that mistake. But this shouldn't be a stretched volley for me down the middle. This should be me closing the middle, taking away the middle, like like how they do on, on serves, on their serves. So, that's one of the things I would note there. That I would, I would pay attention to going forward. Good reflex volley. Then this is the second note here. Look at the difference between my ready position. I'm kind of a little bit tall, but whatever. But it's more about my body weight. You can see my shoulders are not... Um, I'm not like engaged, you know. Like I'm not, I'm not that engaged. I'm kind of upright, leaning, leaning back a little bit. Look at my opponent. Look at where he is. Look how engaged he is. He's leaning forward, ready to, to, to play. So I would say that's another thing. Like when it gets to these rally, rally, like volley, volley points and and stuff. Like yeah, Hovi hit two really good backhand inside out return um, volley. Sorry, and I should have been a little bit more engaged. This wasn't an easy volley, but it wasn't a a, a, a tough volley that, that I should have missed, that, that I ended up missing at do. So like I said, this is the point that I remember the most in the match. Um, just trying to hit it down instead of maybe just punching it through the court on a more neutral volley. But yeah, overall, a little bit of unlucky game, and maybe I could have done a little bit better at the deuce points. But yeah, we keep going. This is where I thought that they started to claw back a little bit of momentum. I had a little bit of dip, whether it's focus or energy, stress. Maybe I was a little bit tired because of the stress. Like, I, I don't really know. Like I said, you just, at moments, my mind drifted to getting across the line and that sort of stuff. And um, I just tried really hard to remind myself to just sustain the moment. So that's one of the things that I would also check off that I did well. Like, when my mind did stray, I didn't... Um, I didn't stay too long in that period, but de definitely for like two, three, four games here, I did have a little bit of a period where I was thinking ahead and maybe also thinking back, like wondering if the, the opportunity was gone, like us holding Hobby serve to stay up a break could have been huge for us, but like I said, I was just focused on just trying to get get the hole and stay stay with the like scoreboard pressure. This was the second killer for me this game. Um, we get to 15 all here. And like I said, I, I noticed that my boy Walko was starting to give a little bit of mistakes on his serve. He goes double double here. So the adjustment that I made, I thought if he just double faulted twice, maybe I'll step a little bit closer to the baseline. He's gonna take pace off and I'll take an aggressive and then he bomb one's T. So yeah, a little bit unlucky on that one. Decent point from Harvey, I, at least to make them play a return. And then he had a look at the second serve for us to go back up the break. This moment here kind of messed us up um, 
a little bit going back. So in this moment, my grip kind of tears because I hit the floor and my butt cap came out. So we took a little bit longer than we should have. Time violation in the morning. Got a time violation. So, so what that means is, I mean, in this moment, it didn't affect us because we were, all, we were just so in the zone on, on getting the job done. Um, but it did affect us moving forward. We started to rush a little bit because the next violation, next time violation would be a loss of a point. So I don't know if in that moment the umpire could have had a little bit more discretion because I fell and my grip tore and stuff. But I didn't sell it. I didn't be like, oh, my grip, oh, whatever, you know. Otherwise, I'm sure he would have given me more time. I just got up, popped it back in place and kept going. But it did affect us. We started to rush a little bit, and I'll show you a point later on in the match where it really bothered us. Yeah, in this moment, I, again, I thought that I was, from all of the match, I was serving really well and being really aggressive, so I was confident on my serve. I was a little lazy here. Bad miss. Good move. I sure went cross on that ball. But one of the things I realized with these really high-level double teams is they tease you a little bit with the area that you think you can hit into. Um, and they don't really make decisions where they're just going to go on a ball that they shouldn't have. You know, So like on that one, the first point of the game, I thought maybe Hans saw me backing up. Maybe he would pinch the middle of the court to take off the middle ball, so I decided to go line. But he just stayed and put it away. You know, He just teases you with that little area that you think you have. And then, um, yeah, and then he just covers that area. Like I said with hands, he's going to lob on that backhand sometimes. He's not going to hit through it down the line. That I thought was so unlucky. Like, I hit that volley really hard. And if I went the other way, it was a clear winner, but I hit it hard into the ground. I thought that for sure I would have just hit his body, hit his toe. Yo, know, this is so painful rewatching this. So at the beginning of this tie break, this is one more area time that I'll pause. So this is the first of return, they missed it long. Thought they hit a really good backhand inside out return and this was the second serve. As you can see, I kind of missed it in the net with no conviction. Like the, the ball kind of went into the net, it died into the net. That happens when you're late on the ball with your hands, like with your, sorry with your hands and with your maybe wrists a little bit. So the ball kind of plays my racket instead of my racket playing the ball. And um, that maybe could have been a little bit of tension, maybe a little bit of nerves. So I just, I'm proud of like how I started the tie break with a, with a return that it also looks bad. You know, when you miss a return like that with nothing into the net, it probably could give the opponent some confidence. So I just, one of the things I've been working on recently was seeing when stuff happens and changing it, you know, and, and I, I liked how I came back in the second point to change it. Good return from Hans. I wasn't that accurate with the serve. It was big, but not that accurate, and then I, I made a mistake in the net. That's what I mean. Good recovery there to start swinging out on returns again. That was a good return. Good serve. I'm trying to kill me.
this moment just trying to try trying to stay competitive, trying to keep the score close. But these teams have closed the middle so much. Look at where they are. They're, they're closing the middle of the court so much. You don't really have the gap in between. So you would think, okay, if you analyze, maybe they're kind of close. You can lob. That's tricky. Or you can go cross. Because you see, like, um, you would think that if he's covering the middle, maybe you have all this area of the court to hit into. But that's not actually what you have. What you actually have is, like, right here. And you're going to have to hit it over a higher part of the net and dip it low. So you don't really have that either. So when them them closing so much, I thought I was gonna crack it hard down the line and try and beat Hans' reactions, which I, I did. This point was tough, but I don't think I hit a bad pick up here. Hans just knew. Like with these better players, they just know like three six second serve look at him he's already moving as soon as i haven't even hit the ball yet it's a half volley he's already going he is already committed to, to going if i went back behind he's already running to the left it's a winner if I, if I come this way you know but that's just such a such a tough shot and i actually thought my pickup was pretty good look how much he has to stretch and he was already running full sprint across so i wasn't too mad about that like he i think he just kind of stole that point from us and unfortunately that makes a difference That was a mistake in editing for me. It was a second serve, I think, if I'm pretty sure. And I knew that he, like I said, the right, he was getting a little bit nervous on his serve. So I thought that the serve was going to be slow. That's why I'm so far inside the, the baseline. That was a mistake for me. This is the moment that I told you that the time violation came back to haunt us because we didn't want to waste time and lose a, a first serve at 6-7. And Hovi called I formation serve out wide and I go left um but I mean he called that I go right and for whatever reason I heard in my mind I go left but I knew I knew he said go right I knew that it was my mistake right after it happened but he was pretty good about it like he, he didn't make me feel bad about it obviously like shit happens in matches but that was definitely my mistake and if I had more time and more clarity I would have told him not to hit that play like don't do that play I wouldn't have agreed to doing that play but, but yeah it happens it happens. Okay, my takeaways, I would say I return well for the most part. I serve well also for the most part. I think that maybe in some moments I could have closed the middle of the court a little bit more, try and make them hit around me like, like what they did. Their positioning was really engaging and really in the middle of the court and anything that was floaty in the middle of the court, they were going at it, which obviously pays off. Like he would steal a point or two from us every now and again that maybe they shouldn't have necessarily had, but that makes a difference. I would say that. And I think I have more clarity on how they are as a team. Like, I, I'll just take note about the righty that every now and again he can lose some confidence on his serve. I don't know if it was a one-day thing. It could have just been he had a bad serving day, so you never know. Maybe next week or the um, day after tomorrow um, he serves much better and he stays solid the whole time. But it's just one of those things that I'll, I'll pay attention to in case I see it starting to come. Maybe we'd be a little bit more aggressive on his serve and try to make him feel that pressure from early. Um, and then with hands, again, on the backhand, he's either going to hit through it cross or try to lob. He doesn't really take that backhand line, and in this match at least. So I don't know if he's going to make some adjustments as well going in the next match, but those are things I would say. And I've already started to address the kind of more neutral volleys that I feel like I can improve on a little bit. Um but yeah, ultimately, I don't know how much better I could have done on this day. Like, I thought for my level, I played really well, and I'm really proud of the performance. I had a little bit of a dip in the second set, but I recovered really quick. So, so yeah, I'm I'm, I'm happy with the result. Um, obviously, I'm not happy that we lost, but I'm happy that I put in a good performance and gave us a bunch of chances to, to, to win the match. I thought we could have actually 
beating them in the second with a couple of breaks. But um, that's tennis and that shows that they're experienced and they're able to dig themselves out of these kind of matches. So I'll just learn from it. And yeah, let me know in the comments down below what you think. Um, if you like this kind of stuff, we sh if we should do it more often. And, and yeah, thanks for watching and see you guys in the next uh, video.